Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in Gladstone call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we're going to tackle another one of those common problems on the Z3 at the request of several of my viewers. We're going to deal with stuck side view or wing mirrors. Now, I'm very lucky. As you can see, mine aren't stuck. This driver's side one is very easy. I fold it almost every day to give myself a little extra room in the garage. Now the passenger side one, I don't use as much. I don't fold as much, so it's a little bit harder. That's the one we're gonna work on. Uh, I'm really taking a chance because to do it the way I wanna do it, uh, I'm kind of taking a chance on breaking 25 year old plastic. You've seen me do that before. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to buy a new mirror. Mine are in really good shape. But for you, the viewer, I'm going to take that chance. But first, three Zeds of the week. First up, we have Judd from Kentucky with his 1999 2.8 liter five speed British tradition exclusive edition with only 36,000 miles. Now this dark green car with champagne seats is a recent purchase. So far Judd has replaced the rear sway bar links and bushings, done some renewal work on the finish. He says there's a lot left to do but he's going to work on it and drive it at the same time and eventually will it to his daughter. Very nice. Next up, Cliff from Maryland with his 2001 3-liter 5-speed Hellrot 2 red car with beige ostrich leather interior, only 51,000 miles, gorgeous. So far, Cliff has replaced the high beam relay module, so now he has daytime running lights. He said that was a very tough project. He's got the HVAC controls replaced, and this last picture is his Zed with his 2016 328D wagon. Boy, I love those BMW wagons. I'm jealous, Cliff. Nice job. Last but not least, Clarence from West Virginia with his 2000 2.5 liter 5-speed in metallic green with 89,000 miles. He says it's in almost perfect condition. He's done a lot of work, including headlight replacement, top motor was repaired. He's put on new side panels and side badges. He's done the seat belt guide fix and put on a Flowmaster muffler for a little extra growl. Very nice. Gentlemen, thank you so much as always. If you'd like to see your car on Z of the Week, please follow the directions in the description below. And now let's get to those mirrors. Okay, so we're on the passenger side now, and obviously if, if your mirror isn't stuck, like mine isn't, it's pretty simple. I'll try and be careful and grab the whole thing and move it smoothly without tilting it in an angle. Uh, but right now, if I needed to lubricate this, so I've zoomed in on that folded mirror right at the joint and again it's gonna be kind of hard to see because it's hard to light up but basically I have enough space now and I kind of have access to the joint that if I needed to lubricate this I, I could just squirt in some WD-40 or uh, any kind of penetrating lubricant I could get in there and then probably work it back and forth and loosen it up so for me, no big deal. But if you're completely frozen in this position, there really isn't much room at all to try and get a, a lubricant in there. And, and we're gonna have to do it the hard way. Okay, so the hard way. Now I watched another video online, older video, where a guy just basically took a, a nylon tool. So, you know, obviously you don't wanna scratch this. And he just pried around the edges of this slowly around and around and eventually just popped off. This mirror is held in. Uh, it has a back with actual clips. Now my thought was those clips were pins and those pins were inserted into a white plastic ring. And I've got the, uh, the endoscope hooked up and I'm gonna show you the inside of this thing. I thought they were pins and that would make sense. You'd pry them out and they'd slowly come out for pins 
holding this white plastic ring and the mirror uh, portion together and you just pry that out and there you go. <laughs> it wasn't that simple. They're actually clips and I'm going to take you inside this here using the endoscope uh, just to show you exactly the fact that it's, at least on my model, it's more complex than just prying and prying and prying because I think I definitely would have broke it if I hadn't taken a break and really looked at it uh, using the endoscope. So let's take a look. Okay, so now we're inside the mirror and you can see that white plastic ring, which is the outside part of the motor assembly, what actually moves your mirror. And you can see the black plastic clips that's coming out from the back of the mirror and it's clamped onto that white tab, that white plastic tab. But you can see the way those teeth are, it's gonna be really hard to pry those away just straight off without breaking them by force. Uh, and what I've done here is now you've seen it after I've removed one of them. Basically, I put a eight millimeter tip screwdriver in the space between the tab and the back of the mirror. And that pried those clips off just enough to, uh, with a little gentle prying to take them off. Okay. We've had some success. I got that, uh, bottom outboard corner clip off using a screwdriver and I'll show you how I did that in a minute. I did the same with the uh, upper outboard clip with the screwdriver and each time I did this I adjusted the mirror to have the maximum uh, access possible to that particular corner. Now you can see that plastic ring much better now and you can see uh, the tab which actually has a hole in it. Uh, and I'll show that better in a second. Now this upper inboard corner, I took off just by kind of moving it. And now I'm at the point where I'm at that bottom, I'm at that bottom corner. And I think I can just wiggle this out. We'll find out. This will be the one I break, the easy one, right? Because it's going to be really hard to uh, be really hard to get it's going to be really hard to get. Uh, excuse the filming. This is really hard to film. Uh, it's going to be really hard to get anything in, and you can see how tenacious these clips are. There we go. Hello. Look at that. Okay, here we go. So, you've got that plastic ring. The four tabs that hold the mirror to the ring. And as you can see, the ring is what the motors rotate. And then the mirror is connected to it using these clips, which we've seen close-ups of before. Now again, how I did this was starting with the bottom, and I did chew it up just a little bit, but starting with that bottom clip, uh, I moved the mirror as far up and in to access it as I could. Then I took a screwdriver while I was actually holding the uh, mirror away from the enclosure, actually using the endoscope camera. But I mean, obviously you could use a nylon tool as well. I stuck this screwdriver in between. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I stuck it in between, in between the white plastic tab and the back of the mirror. And when I turned this, I just opened it up enough to let that slide out. And I did the same thing with this one, did the same thing with the uh, upper outboard one. And then, like I said, then the inside and the two inside ones were kind of just a matter of wiggling it away gently. But it finally came out, no breakage. So now let's get to supposedly the easy parts. I actually didn't realize in the video I'd seen before, they did not have, uh, I guess I have defrosting mirrors. Is that right? I don't know what else that would be. But uh, uh, let's see if we can take that apart, make our lives a little bit easier. Okay, so I've decided to be a wimp and not try to pull these two old wires out of the mirror portion of this. 
I, again, I can only assume that's a defrosting mirror. I didn't know that. Uh, didn't see this in the previous video I had watched. But then it's just a matter of accessing uh, to get the enclosure off. You've got four T10 torque screws. So we're just going to go ahead and take those apart. Okay, so once those four torque screws are out, it's nothing more than this is a clamshell. And that comes apart. Of course, I'm kind of stuck on uh, the mirror itself because of those wires, but you get the idea. So what this gives us access to is the important stuff in our problem. Remember the problem was the mirror wouldn't turn. So now, we can access the actual problem, uh, the, the, the part that's giving us the problem. You have access to the actual joint. Uh, and again, if your only problem is this won't swivel, if this part like mine is good, then you're fine. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and you could take any kind of uh, lubricant, penetrating lubricant and put it in here, WD-40, I mean, it really doesn't make any difference what you use. So before I lubricate this, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give everything a good wipe down with a damp cloth. Uh, just kind of, you know, just kind of get all the dust and everything out of it and uh, get that crud out of there. And I, what I noticed was this connection uh, to the wires there seems to have dielectric grease on it. Uh, I'd imagine to keep those connections uh, water free when it's raining or you wash your car or whatever. I, I really tried to wiggle those wires and get it out, but it's just not coming. And, and I'm going to leave it. It's kind of a hassle because, uh, you know, it keeps me from really taking this thing apart well. But I'm just going to clean up as best I can without interrupting this circuit. And uh, then we'll go ahead, lubricate it, put it back together. Okay, so I've cleaned this up a bit, just using a wet rag, let it dry. And I've also managed, I turned it, because mine turns pretty easily. I turned it just using the metal part. And if yours is stuck, you may think it's stuck here, but that's just a seam on the metal work. Underneath, uh, where this arm actually hits uh, the aluminum base, to this thing is where you're gonna to have to get some penetrating lubricant in there if yours is completely stuck, mine's not. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little penetrant in there anyways, a little white lithium grease with penetrant just because I'm in here and I might as well do it. Obviously, if you have a bigger problem, you're gonna to have to spray in some WD-40 or some PB Blaster, let it soak, come back to it, kind of work it a little bit, try and get a little bit of movement out of it until it finally breaks loose. Uh, but again, fortunately, I don't have that problem. Okay, so again, I'm using, a, I am using PB Blaster uh, penetrant with white lithium grease. Kind of hard to see, but there's a little, uh, there's a little tab little opening right here which is a convenient place to shoot in a little bit of lubricant so little dab will do ya don't want to put in too much also hit it from the other side probably more than I wanted to but now I'll just go ahead and work that in a little bit and then I'll wipe off the excess and call it a day. Uh, really the only other thing we got to do is reverse the steps for putting it back together. I'm gonna go ahead and take the two outer parts, put them together with the four torque screws, T10 torque screws, and then I'm gonna snap that mirror back into the, put the clips on the tabs and call it a day. That's it. Success for change. Hey folks, there you have it with a little bit of patience, managed to do it without any breakage. Now, to go a little deeper into this project, uh, sometimes, and depending on where you live, maybe you live in an area with a lot of salt or, or dust or whatever, you may have a mirror that's really corroded or you may have the actual uh, paint, because this is aluminum down here, you may have the actual paint peeling off of it. 
Now there's a great old tutorial from one of the uh, forums that I found on how to completely remove the mirror, strip it down, refinish it. So if you need to go that deep into it where you're actually gonna have to take your door card off, you're gonna have to uh, disconnect wires, things like that, that tutorial is linked in the description. So take a look at that if, if you need to go that deep into it. I'm not gonna tear mine completely apart, sorry, because I really like the way it looks right now. Uh, but hey, if you found this content valuable, as always, please crush that like button. And until next time, remember, friends don't let friends drive boring.